Hi, everybody. I'm Todd. Welcome to Todd Talks. Uh, today's interview is going to be awesome because it's going to be difficult, actually, because um, this artist I'm very close to, he's one of my best friends, so it's going to be hard to interview someone I already know everything about. So I'm going to do my best to introduce you to one of my besties, Adam Scott Rote, uh, in Florida. Hey, Adam. How you doing? Hello. I want to see you. <laughs> I have to put my peepers on. I'm, we're getting old, boy. So. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm getting better. Uh, I, I, I'm with you. You know I'm 100% with you. So Adam and I are a lot alike, so this interview is going to be very interesting. I'm going to get right to it. Um, uh, we have something very special. For those of you who know Adam Scott wrote, who he is, or collect his art, um, something very special we're going to talk about. There's a hint behind him now. But for those of you who don't know who Adam is, I'm going to have Adam explain what he does. A lot of people look at Adam's work and don't realize he's a painter. So tell us what kind of art you create, Adam, and we'll go into what we're saying. You know, it's interesting, when I look back at what I create or how I got there or what I do, it started with, um, as a kid, a movie chance. And, and growing up, we had a choice of 3, 5, 8, and 43 on a good day. So, you know, different from what most people uh, look at today with 100 zillion channels and instant on demand, when it was 4 o'clock for a Jerry Lewis movie or some of the things that I love, you had to make sure your chores were done and you planted right there. Any bathroom breaks had to be during commercials, and you were back there. There was no video recorders. There was nothing. But I remember being fascinated in this one movie, and I was probably 12, 13 years old, uh, Artists and Models with Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. And um, Dorothy Malone was a love interest. So when Dean Martin finished talking to Jerry of his dream, he went upstairs to <laughs> Dorothy Malone's apartment. There was a very young Shirley MacLaine dressed as Bat Lady. And... Martin went in, Dorothy Malone supposedly was painting her, and they had brought in original Vargas and Petties into this, into the, lined up in here. And I just remember as a 13-year-old boy thinking how freaking beautiful those illustrations were. Like I was like blown away. About a year later, because back then, when he wanted to learn something, he went to the library. So after I exhausted my regular library, I would take one bus to the Rapid Transit, Rapid Transit downtown, walk 12 city blocks from the public library and find more and just get lost. Anything on airbrush, I would start to learn. So my parents bought me a Sears hobby airbrush and compressor. Zoom forward, airbrush was a way of realism. Back then in the 70s, it's what was on vans and it was on cars and it was on motorcycle tanks. And it had that very incredible realism. Of course, there was Frazetta. And Boris Vallejo and all the, you know, the great ways that you would see um, um, murals and things that were done on them. So, uh, of course, I was all of a sudden told by my art director, well, that's not, how, that's not real art. So that's not how you really paint. Oh, that's not a fine art. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. no, 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 no. That's, I just did it more. <laughs> I mean, it really. I hear you on that. I, I've heard that a hundred times on different types of art. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, you're not a real artist. That's not a real article. That's commercial, not real. And I'm like, so I've always gone against what I call the um, typical or I, I run with my passions. My passions has always been, as I now call it, pop, pop culture. You know, I'm moved by events or things that I grew up with, and I love to put them on the canvas. And I love to um, pay tribute, pay homage, and, and get this crazy connection you know, going with other people that also appreciate that look or appreciate that feeling that I'm coming across with. So I, over the years and years, I've honed those skills. I actually got to thank movie star Jerry Lewis for helping me paint the way I do. And it, it, that was, that's another moment we'll talk about. But that was, you know, one of those um, aha moments in my life where I was like, yes, you know. So the way I paint is old school. It's um, studying Hajime Soriyama, which is a Japanese illustrator. It's studying um, Vargas. Back in the 90s, I actually had a gentleman from Las Vegas that commissioned me to reproduce six Vargas. So I actually got to, you know, because he wanted to sell them in his gallery. And so I actually got to really break down and get better and understand how he did it. You know, and so you'll see it in my style so much. Um, well, I've watched you evolve from when I discovered you in 2010, 10 years now I've known you. And um, I've watched you, like there's a piece here behind me, I can move this, I think. 
um, where you actually were doing painterly stuff too. I remember you did this, you know, acrylic paint down here, you made it more painterly, and then of course airbrushing, and I mean, and again, people that don't know you are gonna learn about this, because you and I are gonna do more than one Todd Talks, and we'll, more about that later. This isn't your only time, really the reason you're here today is really to debut this really special project you're working on, which I'm personally excited about too, and my shirt is a hint as well. I did that on purpose for you. Uh, I watched it, I watched it, Adam, I watched it first. <laughs> When I, I'm a kid of the 80s, you know, and there was a lot of rock bands back in the day that I really enjoyed. Um, and my favorite of all time was using the Banshees. There was a band called Oingo Boingo, very famous lead guy named Danny Elfman. And when I heard Danny Elfman and Susan the Banshees were writing a song together called Face to Face, which was the only composed and sung song on the Batman soundtrack, I was in heaven because it was Batman. It was Danny Elfman, and it was Susie and the Banshees. For me, it was a trifecta. So a lot of people who don't know who Danny Elfman is, they're going to find out how much they love him through other icons they love. I didn't know how much I loved Danny until Susie and Batman kind of introduced me to who he really is besides Oingo Boingo. So with that, I'm going to shut my trap and let Adam explain what he has accomplished and is releasing this summer. Really exciting. So tell us what's new, Adam. I'm very excited about this. Well, the great thing you know about me is, and, and actually even the couple of the movie stars I work with, like Angie Dickinson, used to kind of be show, so what's on the calendar next year? What are you thinking? What's your, what's your thought? So I would bring her into different series of where my passion, where my, my muse was. So this one just happened to be Danny Elfman. The, you know, and, and, and if you're looking at um, magical collaborations, look at Tim Burton and Danny Elfman. Well, so, tell people who Danny Elfman is, because I, I swear a lot of people know his music, but they don't realize who this guy is. So tell uh, them who Danny Elfman is and why, you, why you're following him and not just something else. I always go back, do, 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 He's, you know, The Simpsons. Uh -huh. the last, uh, first really big project for him was The Simpsons theme. Um, also, his first major movie was Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure. That's right. You know? One of the greatest things that when you read about and understand the collaboration that happened to Tim, you know, Tim Burton at that point just happened to bump in. He loved it. He went to one of his concerts, loved it, and started musing him. And here's a man that didn't finish, finish high school, was going into college, didn't even finish, didn't even get into it, and just started doing what he was doing. So I, I think what I loved about musing Danny Elfman was the fact that it very similar to me. I was actually rejected from the Cleveland Institute of the Arts because supposedly my portfolio wasn't rounded out enough and I didn't grasp what my teachers were doing. So I should go back. <laughs> I've heard that a hundred times from people too that are really great artists, but whatever. Um, I was immediately like, I am, you know, I was really so, drunk. well, but the other thing too is when you look at Danny Elfman, when you hear a movie or you listen to certain things, it's like you can pick, that's Danny. You can pick out when he's doing something. I also look at the fact that when I was first starting to paint and work on pieces, um, I would be compared to Olivia de Giardino. So I would be compared to you know to um, other illustrators like you know um, Elgren or or kind of have that style. It wasn't until I did the American Ruins that all of a sudden it became Adam Rose. And that American Ruins, this is there's one behind me here. Adam was very famous for that. In fact, it's one of the ways I discovered Adam in 2010. When I was uh, working overseas, I found Adam's work, and I was just like, <laughs> and then we got this really great relationship. And then one of the reasons why this is so hard to interview Adam is because we'll end up talking about his cats or like my drinking habit, like <laughs> instead of art. <laughs> so, so with that said, that being said, I, I really want people to know what you're releasing because. You've been in this gallery since I took over as gallery director. I, I really wanted you to be part of this family because I believe in what you do because it's different. No one else does what Adam Scott Rote does. So tell them what you're releasing with Danny Elfman and all the iconic things that he's done. Tell us, tell us what's awesome because I'm so excited. That was the thing, again, when you're looking at the muse, why I chose Danny or why at least because when you look at the body of his work, there's no other one, there's nobody like him, you know, other than maybe Johnny Williams. Who is, you know, and they say, well, who's Johnny Williams? Well, if you look at a, uh, movies, Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars, so, all the way. So there's, there's this, you know, to me, when you look at a composer, a film composer, there's two people that stick in my head the most. And it's Danny Elfman and John Williams. 
um, Johnny Williams only because when you go back to the 60s, you look at the way that they, he was lost in space. He was time tunnel, you know, doing all the same thing that kind of like Danny started with or kind of playing with and doing. So when you, uh, what I love about Danny is I started looking at all the films and what he did, Batman. Well, I remember going into the theater to see Batman and Jack Nicholson as the Joker and Tim Burton and Michael Keaton. Remember you talk about all the writing and they used to do back then before, you know, the internet, there was no internet. I mean, and but don't forget Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. Me, That was 92, <laughs> 1992 Batman Returns. Returns, Batman Returns, that's right. That was the Danny Elfman, that was my first Danny Elfman soundtrack was Batman Returns because of Susie and the Banshees on it. But Adam's right. Adam's trying to tell you guys it's Simpsons. It, I mean, it, it goes way back. Danny Elfman is a legend. And so he, he so he, it, the way the whole powers that be, and this was a big movie for Tim Burton. This was a big debut. And they pretty much told, and they, they so he wanted to bring Elfman in to do the soundtrack. And the powers that be said, oh, well, he's going to have to work with Prince. You know, they wanted him to collaborate with Prince on the soundtrack. And yeah, Danny Watson. Danny walked away. He said, right. no, you know, and he was thinking, of course, in his mind, he was thinking, you know, when I listened to look at that stuff, he's like, I've made the biggest mistake in my life. But they came back to him and said, okay. Where other people were like, are you nuts? What are you giving this multi-million dollar movie giving to nobody? He's not nobody. And he produced one of the most glorious opening Da, 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 da. I mean, I mean, this is a, and, and it's just like um, reminds me of Amadeus. You remember? He didn't have any training. He didn't have anything or whatever it is. And he would just go and do this. And Sally Arnie would be like, "What? How? How? You know, I've been working years on this. So that's again my passion. That's why I'm looking at this, watching this, looking at the collaborations that all happen. So then he rolls over to Batman Returns, as you said. He brings in his. You know, Susie and the Banshee, Michelle Pfeiffer, comes in, flips, 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 meow. Meow. Boom. So good. I goes up on the back of my arms, you know? So for me as an artist, a painter, oh, okay. So we're starting to look at really what, what could I you know, use with? Mars Attacks. Uh, Edward Scissorhands. Um, One of my favorite movies of all time when I was a kid because I looked like Edward Scissorhands. I had the same makeup, same hair. Think about that classic, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, that, that way he brings the kids, the choirs, and that, that tinkling in the background, you know, and that. Oh, and the, and the, the, the mournful strings that he does. Yes. Very mournful, like, all that. I mean, he's really, again, like you said, he's classic. But I think the thing that people know the best of Danny Elfman, arguably, is what's behind you, what's on my shirt. It was the first soundtrack that I, re I recognized, okay, Danny Elfman is more than a Wingo Boy, more than a collaborator on music, like this guy is a genius. And so behind you is one of my favorite characters, it's Jack Skellington. Understood him, I guess you could say, in high school, in college when it came out, I was in, I was in university when it came out. And I understood Jack and his need to make everybody happy and then making mistakes. But that piece behind you, you're doing unique ones of that. Tell them what you're having done to this piece, what you've had done for many of your pieces, but Danny's actually a part of this project. Danny, actually, so we were able to actually put together 14 pieces of different movies. And Danny generously co-signed along with me on each one of these. I'll have the originals all back next week here, back in the studio. And I'm uh, so excited. You know, we have used Batman. We've used, um, you know, people don't realize he was part, he did the Avengers soundtrack. So... I, mean, I didn't know that until you and I talked. I didn't know Danny Elfman was doing Avengers. I had no idea. But tell them what about Jack Skellington behind you, because I, I mean, I know you've already sold a couple of unique ones, and I, I really want one in the gallery. So, so J Jack Skellington. So th there's actually, um, I'm going to use different characters within the piece. So the painting, the original Jack is. So what you're seeing here is actually one of the muses. So actually, the painting is just Jack Skellington. Period without the other figures that are in there right now. So it's almost like a blank that I left it so I can bring in. This one here, I actually brought in and painted in Dolly and Jack, you see Zero down here, and Oogie Boogie. But I'm gonna be able to go back in, and, and so imagine that, and even the music notes gone, just signed by me and Danny, and then you're, we're gonna be able to go back in and paint your favorite characters into it. That's the only way I'm doing it. 
not doing any additions. I'm, you know, here's, can I tell the big news? Yeah. Yeah. Ready? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I have a deadline and I'm doing a Sally to go in with this. And Catherine O'Hara is going to sign along with Danny and I on the nightmares. So when people buy the art, they get Danny's signature, Catherine's signature, your signature. I sense there's something in the wind. What's this? It feels like tragedies at hand. <laughs> I'm not good today, but that's Sal. I love Sal's one of my favorite characters of all time, too. You know, he wrote all the music first or composed all the music before the, before the script was even written. That's right. It was kind of like, you know, I, I think you and I actually talked about it, or maybe talked about it with somebody else like Bjork in Dance in the Dark. Like there was a script, they just made up the lines. And so Danny was given the information what the movie was about from Tim and Danny wrote the songs. Like almost helped, helped Tim put the movie together with what he wrote. Voice of all the singing. What's interesting is there's two voices. There's Jack Skellington, which is an actor that voices Jack, but Danny's the one that sings all the songs for the movie. That's right. That's so, right. So he is the voice, to me, he's the voice of Jack Skelly. Other people will go, deny, 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 but, you know. Well, there's a lot of that. I mean, Demi Moore was uh, Esmeralda in Hunchback in Notre Dame, but then they had another girl do the singing part. So I, I digress. But you're right. I always think of Danny Elfman as Jack Skellington's voice as well. Like, it, he's the voice of Jack Skellington. Um, and I, I guess, you know, Tim Burton, I hate to say this, Tim Burton actually takes a back seat with Nightmare Before Christmas because Danny really put his thumb for the DNA all over it. Yeah, and what's interesting is he, uh, he wasn't even the director of this. Of this. He was working on two different uh, main projects. I mean, he was more involved in Corpse Bride. He was more involved in um, some of the other ones that they did. Yeah. That were Mars Attacks. Uh -huh. uh, again, I'm doing Mars Attacks. I'm actually, do you know how I did all the drive-ins and I said I never would ever, ever, ever do another drive-in? So what Adam's talking about is he does a whole series called Drive-In Days, D-A-Z-E. And they're drive-in theaters with these old cars, but Adam changes the screen on each one of the drive-ins. So that's what he's talking about with drive-in days. So go ahead and finish your Mars Attack story. So we're just, Danny signed two blank drive-ins for me to paint. So I'm using, one of them I know is using as Mars Attacks. Awesome, I love it. I love yeah. it. So, so those of you are figuring out what Adam does, not only is he an amazing painter, um, an artist, but Adam can take like the piece behind him and let's say that the mayor, town mayor, is your favorite character and the head spins. Adam would uniquely, of course, make one of these with the town mayor, with Jack Skellington and Danny Elfman's signature and Adam Scott's signature. He makes unique pieces every time. You know, not just limited edition of 850. Thanks for buying my stuff. You do unique pieces every time. You sell the signature of, of the uh, artist, of yourself, and then you give the client what they want. If they want Sally with her arm popped off, Adam will do it. Okay, Sally with her arm popped off. Here we go. And it's really unique because you only do 10. That's the thing with Catherine O'Hara. I'm only at 10. You have by the, I think it's August 30th, or I should say until they sell out, which they'll be gone. Like right. That. Before we go, I want to um, talk about, because I know this is a big project, and I don't want to diminish this big project because I'm really excited yeah. about it. I'm nuts about Danny Elfman. I'm nuts about what you do, and I'm nuts about, um, the icons that Danny's involved with. So I do want to talk about some of your other pieces because like Alice has been really hot for years, back to Wonderland, basically. I mean, I have, I'm going to do this. They hate when I do this, but I'm going to do it. I got Madonna here. Is she yeah. showing? I can't see on my glasses. Girl, listen. I got Madonna from, from the uh, 25th anniversary of the release of Erotica, and you only made 25 of those. Um, of course, I have that on the wall here. But let's talk about, things that you really like you haven't done yet and you want to do or something that's in your project pocket that I don't know about or if you're like no I'm stuck with Elfman right now there's nothing else I can do for a long time what's what's next the movie reels are being completely re reimagined which I did specific ones that I work with and now they're done okay I mean, back to me the other day about a uh, um, one of these I'm like nope nope because we're moved that's the other thing that's when uh, there's only one of me. There's only one of me to paint, sculpt, cut, build. Um, I think I sent your uh, your business partner there one of the videos today of just you know somebody had caught me outside the window. And I, I make everything, and I and actually I enjoy that. So 
with you when we were talking about, you remember Alice when we debuted that? That was 2015. It was the 150th anniversary of the story of Alice in Wonderland. And, and we I drank actually, absinthe all night. It was absinthe makes the heart grow fonder party. But We spilled now, a lot of art that night. And I've had people come back, well, I want, I'm, I'm not doing that anymore right now. How many times have you asked me about American Ruins? When are you going to bring them back, right? Do a new yeah, one? I, mean, I can't help it. Everybody but loves I, them. Yeah. But what have I kept on saying to you? When I'm ready to do it. There's then only I'm one of you. Well, because it's like a writer that does a book series over and over. You know, with like, you know, um, flowers in the attic, if there be petals, you know. Um, uh, and and uh, <laughs> think about it. Artists like Thomas Kincaid. He actually hired other artists to do the embellishings on his work because there was too many of them for him to do. So you're not going to outdo yourself. You're going to keep yeah. focusing on unique, amazing pieces. You're not going to do a limited edition run of 3,000 of something. You're going to do unique uh, originals for people to have in their home and continue embracing Hollywood and pop icons and let, sharing that with people, which I love. Well, and it allows collectors, somebody that's getting this piece, to really understand that they're getting something spe very special and unique that's not going to be in thousands of homes um, or that, uh, that it's done by me one at a time. And I, it's the greatest joy of my life. You know, it's, it's when I sit down with some of these movie stars and I get to have them co-sign and collaborate with me. Um, it's not like I'm running all over the place with all these different signatures. These all have to be worked and put in place and done. And then the original has to be done. And uh, it's exciting, you know, and so I wake up every day and I'm excited. You know, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, you know, moving, I've got an idea, I want to run with it and work with it. Whereas if you have all these other things out, it kind of dilutes it, I don't want to. Well, I'll tell you, um, I've never seen anything in years that's diluted. So um, that's why I mean, that's why I called you first to be in this gallery. I love talking to you. Um, we're out of time though. So I want you to say bye to everybody and I can sign us off. And then I'm just going to drop a hint real quick that Adam and I are going to be doing some really fun projects together soon. So stay tuned. Okay. Say bye to your fans, Adam, and I'll, I'll, I'll say goodbye after you're done. Bye everybody. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you all soon. Well, virtually at least. <laughs> yeah. We got a lot of virtual stuff coming up. So guys, that's, uh, Adam Scott wrote one of my besties, one of my favorite artists, and he's an all-time favorite at AO5. We've sold so many of his pieces here, and it's exciting. You can always see him hanging in the gallery. And yes, we're open. Just wear your mask. And um, we will see you for the next Todd Talks uh, soon, and watch for Adam and Todd talking a lot in the future. So uh, call the gallery if you're interested in uh, Jack Skellington, uh, Sally, any of the Danny Elfman projects. If you have questions, email me at inquiries at AO5gallery.com. So, um, Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Adam. Love you, bud. Take care. Thank you. Right, see you, everybody. Bye.